Hello everyone, Anna here from EnglishLikeANative.co.uk. Do you struggle to understand native speakers, especially when they're speaking with each other? <laughs> it's really tricky. We sometimes mumble, speak too fast, use idiomatic language, slang. We even make mistakes with our grammar and our sentence structure. It's difficult. If you do find it hard, then stick around because this video will be very useful to you. So we are going to run a very very natural, off the cuff, unedited, unscripted conversation for your listening pleasure. And then once you've heard the conversation, I'm going to go back at this point and start pointing out and explaining some of the more tricky parts. This is Nick and I talking about clothing. Let's go. Uh, so, Mr. Fashionista, um, I want to ask you about clothes. Uh, no. <laughs> how do how do you do you think you're the kind of person who cares much about clothes, about how you look, your appearance? So I recognise the importance of clothes. Yeah, they're very important. Yeah, you stay out of trouble if you've got them on. Yes. But uh, they're not high up on my priority list. Work is important. It's definitely important. But compared to some of the people at work, um, and we all know the people in our own offices, right? Yeah. Some people love it. Well, really kind of get dressed up to the nines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I work in I work in banking and uh, don't hate me. So you're in an um, office environment and I work in, an in, office London environment. Yeah, in London where everyone kind of, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. tries to look good. Yeah, and there's definitely a fashion yeah. which I don't really subscribe to. So you just rock much. up in an old suit that you've had for how long? It's pre-pandemic. Yeah. So. Do you think that you used to care more mm -hmm. um, about your clothing before? Was there a time where you cared more about how you dressed? Now, obviously, now you don't. I think, I think for me, as life has changed, I, I don't go out anymore. I don't socialise as much anymore because I'm more settled. I have a family. I've got you. Mm -hmm. I've got a family. Yeah, you've given up a bit, right? <laughs> It's not that I've given up. It's just I, I think <clears throat> now it's more about being practical and being comfortable. Because mm -hmm. when you've got young kids, you know, you can't say picking up after them. You can't be in like tight clothing and, you know, skirts and stuff. It's just not practical. Like young boys, they want to be picked up and thrown around. And, and throw up on you and stuff. They throw yeah. up on you when they're young, yeah. not at this age now. But I just think my priorities have changed and what I need from my clothing has changed. I don't need to impress so many people and... You know, yeah, maybe I have just let myself go a bit, but has has it changed for you? So I remember at university, I had you know guy friends and girlfriends, and some of the, some of my female friends um, that once said to me, um, "Yeah, I, you know, you, you're so into your fitness and you care about you know you, the way you look and 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 you care about your hair." I had I had more of it then. Um, yeah, I just don't understand why you don't seem to care very much about your fashion. And I thought bit mean no I can't I you know I think about the clothes I wear and stuff and then somebody else said it and then like another person said it and I was like wow <laughs> I don't think I've got good fashion okay but then you know it in the work environment before the pandemic when everyone would be in the office five days a week then your suit game is quite important you have yeah. to wear nicer suits and and I'd go with people in my team who were really into their their suits and and their kind of city boy fashion and stuff. They went to their gilets and very much into like What's their high end ties. A gilet is um, like a jacket without any arms on. Okay. But it's not a puffer jacket. A puffer jacket's like what a rude boy might wear, but a gilet is what somebody in the Alps might wear when they go skiing or something okay, like that. Okay, I'll have to look that up. You know, and things that people would wear. I think um, I know what you mean. I'll, yeah. I'll look it up. And it, and it works quite nicely with, um, if you wear like a, a, a shirt and a tie and you have a gilet and you go out, it's not too cold, then, you know, it looks all right. It's like a winter waistcoat. Right. I guess. Okay. But that, you know, it, there's almost, there's loads, of, there's loads of memes on social media about people that work in the city in London or in New York that are walking around with their gilets on and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'd go with people that, that were in my team that were very much into their, they'd say, look, I'm going to go and, you know, I talk to somebody about like, getting a tailored suit or something. And I, I do you want to come? 
I said, oh, I'll come and have a look. And then I kind of get pulled into it and we'd look at fabrics and they're like, no, 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 you're, you're the manager. You need to look at this. Come on, let's get the more expensive one out. Oh, really? And they'd kind of egg me onto it a little bit. Yeah. It's very common now that you can go and buy a suit off the peg, which means that you go into a shop, you know, in the UK, you might go to John Lewis or, or Marks and Spencers. <laughs> then you might get one from Tesco's now as well. Yeah. And so you'd get, um, and you might, you can get a nice suit, but they're, built for standard physiques, okay. right? And and it's changed a little bit recently now because you you don't just buy a shirt. So I went and bought some shirts the other day and they had a standard fit, a loose fit, a tailored fit and a skinny fit. Right. So they, they're recognizing more now that you can choose like diff, that basically Different there's body more shapes. than one body shape. Yeah. yeah, there's not just a dad bod that people working in, in an office needs a suit. When you go to actually get a properly tailored suit, then you can make sure that you pick the fabric that you like and they'll and they'll make sure and for me it's quite important so i remember when i went for my college prom i went to go and get a like a tux and the, and the guy said you know do you want a tailored suit or do you want one off the peg and i was like well i'm a student so i'll just have one off the peg and he said I'll, I'll just measure for you and i was doing a lot of exercise actually this would have been university end of university i think and he measured me around the chest and he measured me around the waist and he went you're going to really struggle. And I was like, why? And he said, there's normally there's at the most about five or six inch difference between your chest and your hips. And yeah. yours is 10. Wow. Um, and so, cause like I've got, Tarzan. yeah, so I, cause I was doing a lot of exercise. And so I had a bigger, a bigger, more, more muscly chest and, and back and things, but I've still got a waist cause everything in, with a guy, right? That classic physique comes down quite tight. And that was at a time when They'd only sell one size size shirt, right. and it was normally for, you know. Did you ever older guys? Did with you ever dad take, get Wonder Web, and like iron an extra seam? Well, I I did that. Adjust your own clothes. I did that last week. Did you? Yeah. So I bought a new pair of trousers, and I bought them off the off the peg. Too long. <clears throat> and they were a little bit too long, so I just folded it up, bit of Wonder Web, did in you? in the seams. Yeah, ironed did it in. That, it? Looks great. Yeah, really nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So outside of the office and the suits, what do, what, do, what do you and what do men generally wear in the UK? What are we looking at? So it depends on age, yeah. right? Very, very age dependent because of the different types of lifestyles and stuff that have in their wardrobes and things. Trousers, number one, just ultimate classic, obviously jeans. Jeans, yeah. same for everybody in the world, right? Yeah. Pretty much everywhere in the I, world. I live in my jeans. jeans or my dungarees. Yeah, yeah. So great, you know, hard wearing, comfortable, you know, you can brush dirt off them and all that kind of stuff, right? It's all, all good stuff. And they look good. And they look good. As long yeah. as the elastic's not gone and you've got like a saggy bottom, <laughs> which yeah, exactly. I tend to have yeah, most yeah. of my jeans. Or holes in them and things. Yeah. So, so jeans. And then, you know, if you're my sort of age and you know chinos is quite a big thing chinos is like a, is halfway between jeans and and like suit trousers yeah. and nowadays post pandemic suits are less of a thing you know smart casual chinos is what you'd wear a lot of people might wear them out to a bar or in the evening to dinner you know if we went out for a for a dinner or something then i'd probably wear chinos yeah um look good with really make an effort for me yeah really step it up right and and then what you wear on your feet has got a bigger range i'd say right so you've got you've got like running trainers then you've got um fashion trainers so they could both be nikes right yeah. but one of them are, are, are much thinner and smaller one of them the kind of the classic nikes and things or another brand um and then you've got like boat shoes and uh, like leather shoes. And you can wear all of those in like a relatively like casual sort of way. Yeah. And then when you've got leather shoes, I mean, black leather shoes are a bit smarter. Brown leather shoes you can wear with chinos and things yeah. like that. I probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't ever see me wearing my black leather shoes in anything other than a suit. Yeah, you uh, do like shoes, don't you? You like trainers, you've got quite a lot of trainers. Yeah, I, I think I put, yeah, I do like You, I do you like hog shoes. so much of the shoe rack. The family shoe rack is taken up by like four pairs of trainers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't need four pairs of trainers on the shoe rack, so I'm always kind of putting them back upstairs out of the way. But it varies, right? We've got squash shoes, Yeah. and then we've got our gym yeah. Nikes, and then I've got casual Nikes. Well, you see, I don't have. And then I've have... got brown shoes that I wear for work. Sometimes. I don't have gym Black shoes, shoes and squash shoes. My yeah. my squash shoes are my gym <clears throat> shoes. I don't have a separate pair of training trainers. Yeah. yeah. Just my court shoes. I hate shoes. I need them. 
and they're important, but I'm not very good at buying shoes or matching shoes with my outfit. So I just kind of would just go for the easiest option. Mm. As long as it's flat and comfortable. I don't really do heels. Yeah, yeah. Do you do heels? Sometimes. Do you know what? Some guys wear big, quite big heels now. Yeah. You know, really? and they're concealed heels right. in shoes. To get a bit more To heights. get a little bit more That's height to even stuff out. That's interesting. Yeah. It's changing a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that, you know, there's a bit more, like, of a popularity in social media around, like, some of these, like, conversations around what guys and women want. And I think guys are realising that women like guys that are taller than them, yeah. and then they wear tall heels. Yeah. And guys are like, well, I yeah. guess I'll wear some bigger heels. Not good for your posture. Not your good back, for your posture. Your knees. Yeah, yeah. Things are changing on the shopping, on the shopping front as well, right? So where do yeah. you buy your clothes? Because you tend to just bulk buy. You're just like, right, and now I need some stuff and just go and buy a load of stuff in one go. And More then like you don't panic shop. Buying. Well, you know, you don't, like, lots of people will pick things up as they go. Like, they'll get something every month. They'll pick yeah. up a top here, a pair of trainers there, different sales going on. You don't. You'll go for like two years and buy nothing new <laughs> until there's holes in your stuff um, and your things are falling apart. And then you go, I need to go shopping. And then you just bulk buy but what do you do do you prefer to go into store and actually see and feel the things that you're buying and try them on yeah so you know a bit of a non-standard physique like it's quite important for me to go and try stuff on but yeah. part, part of the reason so since you've known me i think part of the reason why you think that i sort of bulk buy stuff is more to do with the circumstance that we're in, yeah. right? And actually... Tied to two children, not able yeah, to leave the house. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I have to literally say, I have to go and get some of these stuff now now because of a specific thing that's coming up. Yeah. Like, you know, work at the moment has meant that I've needed to focus a little bit more on updating some of my wardrobe for work and making sure that I've got smarter things. Yeah. And so because I haven't had really had much of an opportunity to do that, or money outside of childcare. <laughs> yeah. Um, the drain. It's, it's meant, yeah, it's meant that there's been a bit of a, a pulse, really, of, of trying to yeah. go and get stuff. Because of that challenge as well around, well, I could... I go into town a few times a week, right, to yeah. go, go, into, go into central London. But in order to be able to go somewhere that's not just one or two shops near work on the way home, I've got to go to a very different part of town. So it's a choice then between... Do I come back and help you with the kids and see the children before they go to sleep or something? Or do I just say, well, I'm not doing any of that tonight because I'm going to go shopping. go shopping for two hours because that's yeah. probably what it's going to take, even though I'm already in town. And so I end up buying more stuff online, but and then just either crossing my fingers that it's going to fit or probably almost inevitably going, well, it's not that bad, and then putting it in the cupboard and never wearing it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We definitely need to have a big sort out, I think. <clears throat> go through everything and, and decide. I, I, I'm always doing a sort out. I think your wardrobe could do with a, a good... She just wants some space. <laughs> she's got her eye, She's had her eye on it since she's seen it. Well, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, so, Mr. Fashionista, um, I want to ask you about clothes. At the very beginning, I said Mr. Fashionista. If someone is described as a fashionista, then it's someone who is really interested in fashion. They follow the trends and the latest style and they try to uh, replicate that in their own wardrobe. So if you're a fashionista, then you're really interested in fashion. No. <laughs> How, do, how do, you, do you think you're the kind of person who cares much about clothes, about how you look, your appearance? So I recognise the importance of clothes. Here Nick says, I recognise the importance of clothes. If you recognise something, it's not just a case of seeing something and it be familiar to you. In this context, to recognise something is to accept that it is true. Yeah, they're very important. Yeah. You stay out of trouble if you've got them on. Yes. But uh, they're not high up on my priority list. Work is important. It's definitely important. But compared to some of the people at work, um, and we all know the people in our own offices, right? Yeah. Some people love it. Well, really kind of get dressed up to the nines. Here I said to get dressed up to the nines. If you get dressed up to the nines, then it means that you really 
get dressed up. So it's not just a case of chucking on a t-shirt and a pair of trousers. It's really wearing your smartest, nicest clothes because you want to look good. You want to make a good impression. Often we get dressed up to the nines to attend an event or for a specific purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I work in I work in banking and uh, don't hate me. Here, Nick said, don't hate me after telling us that he works um, within a bank. The reason he says don't hate me is that there generally is in this country, probably in other countries as well, a dislike for the bank and bankers, as there is a dislike in general for politicians. This idea that Everyone who works in authority and controls the laws and the money, that these people are just all corrupted and evil and terrible. Of course, in reality, that's not true. There are many good-willed, honest, hardworking people who work within government and within banks. You can't tar everyone with the same brush, but generally there is a, oof, you work in banking. So that's why he said... Don't hate me. I'm a nice person and I can vouch for that. <laughs> so you're in an um, office environment and I work in, an in, office London, environment. Yeah, where in London where everyone kind of, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. tries to look good. Yeah, and there's definitely a fashion. Yeah which I don't really subscribe to. Here Nick said there's a fashion that he really doesn't subscribe to. Now, you'll understand the word subscribe in the context of YouTube and other social media platforms. If you subscribe to a person or a channel, then you are following them. You're saying, yes, I want to follow this person and see more of their content, which if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do click on that button. In this context, he's saying he doesn't subscribe to a fashion. So this means that he doesn't agree with or support that particular trend, that particular thing, that particular fashion. So if there's something that you do not go along with, an opinion or a belief that you do not follow, then you could say, I don't subscribe to that. So you just rock up in an old suit that you've had for how long? Here I use the phrasal verb to rock up. If you rock up at a place, then it means that you arrive, you turn up. It usually has a sense of being quite relaxed and confident and just kind of turning up. Normally, I would use this if someone was turning up maybe late and not seeming to care that they're late or turning up in inappropriate dress. But just having a sense of being relaxed and uncaring. He just rocked up. We've all been here since 8 a.m. working really hard and you just rock up at 10 a.m. without even saying good morning. It's pre-pandemic. Yeah. So. Do you think that you used to care more mm -hmm. um, about your clothing before? Was there a time where you cared more about how you dressed? Now, obviously now you don't. I think... I think for me, as life has changed, I don't go out anymore. I don't socialise as much anymore because I'm more settled. I have a family. I've got you. Mm -hmm. I've got a family. Yeah, you've given up a bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I've given up. It's just I, I, I think <clears throat> now it's more about being practical and being comfortable because mm -hmm. when you've got young kids, you know, you're constantly picking up after them. You can't be in like tight clothing and you know skirts and stuff it's just not practical like young boys they want to be picked up and thrown around and, and... throw up on you here's another phrase of verb throw up this basically means to vomit they throw yeah. up on you when they're young yeah. not this age now but i just think my priorities have changed and what i need from my clothing has changed i don't need to impress so many people and you know yeah maybe i have just let myself go a bit but has has it changed for you to let yourself go is to no longer care about yourself and your appearance and your health. So if you let yourself go, then you've probably gained a few pounds in weight. I don't have a beard, <laughs> but if you do, then you've probably stopped shaving. So your hair has grown out. Maybe I haven't, I haven't had a trim or even brushed my hair for a while. Maybe I'm not washing. Maybe I'm not as hygienic. I don't know why I have to do my armpits at that point. <laughs> To let yourself go is just to stop looking after yourself. So you probably don't look as good as you normally would. You don't feel as good as you normally would. If you let yourself go, you stop caring. So I remember at university, I had, you know, guy friends and girlfriends. And some of, the, some of my female friends... Here, Nick talks about his guy friends and girlfriends. And then 
later repeats and says female friends. So it's quite an interesting thing that we have here where we talk about our boyfriends and our girlfriends and they are usually our romantic partners. So a boyfriend would be the male romantic partner. A girlfriend would be the female romantic partner. So if I talk about my boyfriend, I'm talking about the person I'm intimately connected with, who I live with and share my life with. But you can also refer to your male friend and your female friends, so the people you're just friends with, but when you're talking about their gender, you can also refer to them as your boyfriends and your girlfriends. But it becomes very hard to understand just from ear the difference. So if I'm talking about my boyfriend and my boyfriend, you can't tell the difference. Context doesn't really help you in this case. So what we tend to do is say my male friends or my guy friends. And you'd normally say my female friends. Although a lot of girls do say my girlfriends, but it is difficult to make that distinction. So I just wanted to point that out so you can be aware of that. And then you have to be, you know, really listening very carefully to work out what the relationship is. <laughs> um, once said to me, um, yeah, I, you know, you, you're so into your fitness and you care about, you know, you, the way you look and 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 you care about your hair. I had I had more of it then. Um, yeah, I just don't understand why you don't seem to care very much about your fashion. And I thought it's a bit mean. No, I care. I you know the word mean means in this context unkind or cruel. So if I am making myself a nice dessert and I make one for my eldest son and my youngest son, but I don't make one for my partner, he might say, hey, why have you not made me one? And I'd say, because I didn't want to. You've let yourself go. You're a bit fat. And then he'd say, that's a bit mean. And he would be absolutely right. That is mean. That's unfair. That's unkind. And of course, I wouldn't do that. I think about the clothes I wear and stuff. And then somebody else said it. And then like another person said it. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I don't think I've got good fashion. Okay. But then, you know, it, in the work environment before the pandemic, when everyone would be in the office five days a week, then your suit game is quite important. Okay. Here, Nick talks about his suit game. Now, this is not a common phrase. You don't need to learn this, but what he's doing by adding the word game after suit is he's suggesting that getting dressed up is like a game. So when you go into work, you are playing at being smart and sophisticated and intelligent. It's all a game, like the game of life, the game of work, the game of love. And here he's talking about his suit game. So he's introduced that idea, that sense of everyone competing to look good, to look the part, to look like they belong in the bank in London. So it's not a common phrase, but he's talking about the game of getting dressed up and looking the part, his suit game. You have yeah. to wear nicer suits. And, and I'd go with people in my team who were really into their, their suits and, and their kind of city boy fashion and stuff. They were into their gilets and very much into like What's their high end ties. A gilet is um, like a jacket without any arms on, Okay. but it's not a puffer jacket. A puffer jacket is like what a rude boy might wear, but a gilet is what... Okay, here Nick mentioned being a rude boy. Now, he doesn't mean a boy who has no manners. It's not about being rude. A rude boy is a term for a subculture, like section of society, a group, usually young teenagers, often this idea of them being quite streetwise, cool, maybe rebellious. I don't understand enough about what makes someone a rude boy. I, I guess you could tell by their fashion, the kinds of people they hang around around with. I don't know. He also mentioned city boy before that. And a city boy is someone who is very much part of the city culture, the business city culture, trying to look the part, wearing very smart suits or designer shirts and nice shoes and going out to the bars and the clubs and partying hard, working hard, just trying to run the rat race, basically. 
somebody in the Alps might wear when they go skiing or something okay, like that. Okay, I'll have to look that up. You know, and things that people would wear. I think um, I know what you mean. I'll, yeah. I'll look it up. To look something up is a separable phrasal verb and it very simply means to look within a reference book or to look on the internet to find some information. So if I don't know what a word means, I will look it up. If I want to learn more about someone who's applied for a job within my company, I'll maybe look them up on the internet, see if I can find something about them on LinkedIn or um, any other social media platforms. And it, and it works quite nicely with, um, if you wear like a, a, a shirt and a tie and you have a gilet and you go out, it's not too cold, then, you know, it looks all right. It's like a winter waistcoat. Right. I guess. Okay. But that, you know, it, there's almost, there's loads, of, there's loads of memes on social media about people that work in the city in London or in New York that are walking around with their gilets on and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'd go with people that, that were in my team that were very much into their, they'd say, look, I'm going to go and, you know, I talk to somebody about like, getting a tailored suit or something. Here we hear tailored suit. A tailored suit or anything that's tailored has been made specifically for a purpose. So if I had a tailored suit or a tailored dress, it would be a dress that has been measured and fitted specifically to my body. So often men get tailored suits, suits that are specifically made and sized to them. And I, I, do you want to come? I say, oh, I'll come and have a look. And then I kind of get pulled into it and we look at fabric. If you get pulled into something, you are encouraged and you are made to participate, usually against your will. I mean, it's not like forcing you, like kidnapping you and forcing you to do something, but it's like with strong encouragement and maybe some lighthearted blackmail, you are being pulled into something. You're encouraged to participate. And they're like, no, 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 you're, you're the manager. You need to look at this. Come on, let's get the more expensive one out. Oh, really? And they'd kind of egg me onto it little bit. Egg me on. They kind of egg me on. Now to egg someone on or to egg on someone is to encourage them with words. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, come on. To give them words of encouragement to try and get them to keep going or to do something that they're not really keen to do. It's very common now that you can go and buy a suit off the peg. Here, Nick says off the peg. This phrase means to take something that's literally already ready to buy hanging on a peg within a shop. So it'll be on a hanger, hanging on a peg, and you take it off and take it straight to the checkout and buy it. So it's all ready. You don't need a tailor to make it for you. Which means that you go into a shop, you know, in the UK, you might go to John Lewis or, or Marks and Spencers. <laughs> then you might get one from Tesco's now as well. Yeah. And so you'd get, um, and you might, you can get a nice suit, but they're built for standard physiques. The word physique it just basically means your body shape. We talk about muscular physiques. That would be a body that is muscly, basically, lots of muscles, a standard physique would be the kind of average physique that you see that most people have although is there ever really a standard physique okay. right and and it's changed a little bit recently now because you you don't just buy a shirt so i went and bought some shirts the other day and they had a standard fit a loose fit a tailored fit and a skinny fit right. so they they're recognizing more now that you can choose like diff, that basically different there's more shapes. than one body shape yeah, yeah there's not just a dad bod that people working in, in an office needs a suit. Dad bod. A dad bod is the body of a dad. The idea is that once you become a father, you're so busy looking after baby and mum, the house, everything, that you aren't able to look after yourself anymore. You let yourself go. You stop going to the gym. You stop exercising. You snack more because you're so tired. And so you start to become less toned and have more of a tummy so you have a dad bod when you go to actually get a properly tailored suit then you can make sure that you pick the fabric that you like and they'll and they'll make sure and for me it's quite important so i remember when i went for my college prom i went to go and get a like a tux a prom a prom is like a function a big dance event that you have to celebrate the end of your time within an educational facility so um, Nick said he had a prom at college and then he thinks that actually it was at university I had a prom at the end of my university degree so after three years we had a prom so it was a big 
not a ball, but a very formal dance event. There's music, there's food, there's drink. Everyone wears their gorgeous gowns and the men wear their suits. That's a prom. And Nick actually talked about wearing his tux. A tux is short for tuxedo. And the, and the guy said, you know, do you want a tailored suit or do you want one off the peg? And I was like, well, I'm a student, so I'll just have one off the peg. And he said, I'll, I'll just measure for you. And I was doing a lot of exercise. Actually, this would have been university, end of university, I think. And he measured me around the chest and he measured me around the waist and he went, you're going to really struggle. And I was like, why? And he said, there's normally there's... Here Nick said, and I was like, we use this. Some people use it more than others. We use this to say how you said something, to say what you said and how you said it. So if you're literally repeating or giving a very clear indication as to what your response was when you're telling a story about something that happened, then you might use this phrase. So I was like, what? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, no. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, that's unbelievable. And she was like, <laughs> you don't even know the half of it. At the most about five or six inch difference between your chest and your hips. Yeah. And yours is 10. Whoa. Um, and so because like I've got... Tarzan. Yeah, because <laughs> I was doing a lot of exercise. And so I had a bigger, a bigger, more, more muscly chest and, and back and things. But I've still got a waist because everything... in with a guy, right, that classic physique comes down quite tight. And that was at a time when they'd only sell one size, size shirt. Right. And it was normally for, you know, did you ever, older guys. Did you ever take, get Wonderweb and like iron an extra seam? Wonderweb. Wonderweb is it's something you can buy in the store. Wonderweb is the brand and it's a product that you can use to stick material to material. So it sticks fabrics together. Wonderweb is specifically designed to help you to tailor your clothes a little bit. So usually if you've got very long trouser legs, so your trousers are too long or maybe your sleeves are too long, you would put the, it's basically like a glue, a dried glue that you was in a ribbon and you place it on the fabric and you fold the fabric over and so that you've got the glue in between but it's dry so it won't stick then you get your iron and you steam you put hot steam onto the fabric and it melts the glue and instantly sticks the fabric to the other fabric so you create a new seam and a seam is where in clothing where material meets material and then is sewn into place. So, for example, um, here, I probably got a seam here um, on this top. I've got a seam for decoration here and a seam here. You have seams down the sides of your trousers, probably have a seam in the side. Yes, I do. And one on here. Well, I, I Adjust did that. Adjust your own clothes. I did that last week did you yeah so i bought a new pair of trousers and i bought them off the off the peg too long <clears throat> and they're a little bit too long so i just folded it up a bit of wonder web did in you? in the seams yeah did ironed it in that looks great yeah really nice fantastic yeah so outside of the office and the suits what do what do, what do you and what do men generally wear in the uk what we're we looking at so it depends on age yeah. Right, very, very age dependent because of the different types of lifestyles and stuff that have in their wardrobes and things. Trousers, number one, just ultimate classic, obviously jeans. Jeans, yeah. same for everybody in the world, right? Yeah. Pretty much everywhere in the I, world. I live in my jeans. jeans or my dungarees. Yeah, yeah. So great, you know, hard wearing, comfortable. Hard wearing. When something is hard wearing, then it isn't easily damaged. So jeans are hard wearing because you can't easily rip or wear down jeans. You know, you can brush dirt off them and all that kind of stuff, right? It's all, all good stuff. And, and they look good. And they look good. As long yeah. as the elastic's not gone and you've got like a saggy bottom. <laughs> Yeah. So here I talk about the elastic not being gone and having a saggy bottom. <laughs> if you describe elastic as being gone or um, something that's functional being gone, what I'm saying is it's done, it's not working properly anymore. So in this case, the elastic has lost its elasticity. So it's no longer tight and stretchy. It's actually quite loose. It doesn't pull back anymore. So when your elastic has gone, your clothes normally become loose and saggy. When something sags, it means that the effects of gravity just allows it to drop down. It's no longer tight. It's saggy. Which I tend to have yeah, most yeah. of my jeans. Or holes in them and things. Yeah. So, so jeans. And then, you know, if you're my sort of age and you know, chinos is quite a big thing. 
Chinos is like... It's, it's, you may have noticed that Nick was um, saying chinos is, where chinos, jeans, and trousers are all plural. So actually, Nick should have said chinos are, as, as you would say, trousers are, jeans are, because they're plural. Here, it's just a very common happens all the time, native grammatical error. Sometimes, or very often in spoken English, natives make mistakes and we just accept it. You'll be surprised how many mistakes that native speakers make. Don't look at that and go, what rule am I missing? You're not missing a rule. We're just breaking the rules. So stress less and <laughs> just accept. Halfway between jeans and, and like suit trousers. Yeah. And nowadays, post-pandemic, suits are less of a thing you know, smart, casual chinos is what you'd wear. Here, Nick says that post-pandemic suits are less of a thing. Now here, when he says it's less of a thing, he's saying it's less important. We talk about things being a big thing or a big deal, meaning it's important or it's not a big thing. It's not a big thing. It's not important. Don't put a lot of weight or pressure on it. So here he says, pandemic suits are less of a thing. They're less important. And then he says, you know, smart casual chinos is what you'd wear. Smart casual is a phrase given to the style of clothing that's required for a particular occasion or event. So if you see that there's a party going on and you're invited to the party and then it says smart cash or smart casual, then it's saying the dress in smart casual attire so it doesn't have to be super smart tuxedo full suit it should maybe be smart trousers and a shirt no tie no jacket or maybe a jacket but no tie don't make it really formal a lot of people might wear them out to a bar or in the evening to dinner you know if we went out for a for a dinner or something then i'd probably wear chinos yeah. um look good with really make an effort for me yeah really step it up right here the phrase step it up means to make more effort to do more to raise the bar which is another idiom to bring up your level so if i'm at the gym i'm on the treadmill and i'm doing a casual walk i mean i might want to step it up a bit i might want to make more effort so i go into a jog and then i might want to step it up again and go into a, a fast run and then a sprint ah, until i'm falling off so to step it up is to take it up a level to try harder to achieve something more and and then what you wear on your feet has got a bigger range i'd say right so you got here, Nick says, what you wear on your feet has got a bigger range, I'd say. Now, when you add I'd say or I would say to a statement, either before or after the statement, then you're basically letting the listener know that it's your opinion, not something that you know as fact. You've got like running trainers, then you've got um, fashion trainers. So they could both be Nikes, right? Yeah. But one of them are, are, are much thinner and smaller. One of them are kind of the classic Nikes and things or another brand um and then you've got like boat shoes and uh like leather shoes and you can wear all of those in like a relatively like casual sort of way yeah and then if you've got leather shoes i mean black leather shoes are a bit smarter brown leather shoes you can wear with chinos and things yeah. like that i probably wouldn't you probably wouldn't ever see me wearing my black leather shoes and anything other than a suit yeah you uh, do like shoes don't you like trainers you've got quite a lot of trainers yeah i i think i put yeah i do like you, I do you like hog shoes. so much of the shoe rack the family shoe rack is taken up by like four pairs of trainers hog to hog something is to take more than your fair share or to hold and hoard something so you keep it for yourself so that no one else can have it for example if we are sitting watching tv together and we have the remote control to control the tv and we have a big bowl of popcorn so we're watching a movie or something or we're flicking through some different options and you hold the, the remote control and you don't let me have a say and you hold the bowl of popcorn and you're eating it and you're not letting me get access to the bowl then you are hogging. You're hogging the remote control and you're hogging the popcorn. So I might say, stop hogging. Stop hogging the popcorn. Give it here. In this case, I said that Nick was hogging or that he hogged so much of the shoe rack. A shoe rack is like a set of shelves specifically for shoes. So we have two shoe racks in our corridor, our entrance hall, where we enter
into the house, take off our shoes, put them on the shoe rack. And then I say that the family shoe rack is taken up by. If something is taken up by, then it is used by, it is given to. So I could say my time is taken up by the children and my work. My time is consumed, is used by the children and my work. There's no spare time for me. Yeah. Like... <laughs> You don't need four pairs of trainers on the shoe rack, so I'm always kind of putting them back upstairs out of the way. But it varies, right? We've got squash shoes, yeah, and then we've got our gym yeah. Nikes, and then I've got casual Nikes. Well, you see, I and don't then I've have got brown shoes that I wear for work. Sometimes. I don't have gym Black shoes, shoes and squash shoes. My yeah. my squash shoes are my gym <clears throat> shoes. I don't have a separate pair of training trainers. Yeah. Yeah. Just my court shoes. I hate shoes. I need them. And they're important, but I'm not very good at buying shoes or matching shoes with my outfit. So I just kind of. We'll just go for the easiest option. Mm. As long as it's flat and comfortable. I don't really do heels. Yeah, yeah. Here I say, I don't really do heels. Do is replacing the verb wear. And we often use this. I don't do canteens. So if you're not someone who likes to eat in a canteen, you might say, I don't do canteens. Or if you're someone who doesn't like to ride on a bus, you might say, oh, I don't do buses. If I don't like taking the lift, I won't take the lift, which is like the elevator. I'd rather walk down the stairs because I'm a little bit scared of lifts. So I'd say, oh, I don't do lifts instead of saying I don't ride or get into a lift. Do you do heels? Sometimes. Do you know what? Some guys wear big, quite big heels yeah. now, you know, yeah. and they're concealed heels right. in shoes. To get a bit more To heights. get a little bit more That's height, to even stuff out. That's interesting. Yeah. It's changing a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, they're, you know, there's a bit more, like, of a popularity in social media around like some of these like conversations around what guys and women want and I think guys are realizing that women like guys that are taller than them yeah. and then they wear tall heels yeah. and guys are like well I yeah. guess I'll wear some bigger heels not good for your posture not your good back, for your posture your knees yeah yeah things are changing on the shopping on the shopping front as well right so where do yeah. you buy your clothes because you tend to just bulk buy. He's like, right, and now I need some stuff and just go and buy a load of stuff in one go. Here on the shopping front, what I'm talking about here is the topic of shopping or on the subject of shopping. So I'm saying, look, while we're talking about shopping, where do you buy your clothes? So on the shopping front, I might then say, um, changing the subject, on the relationship front, how did your date go the other night? On the uh, diet front, did you manage to make that amazing chili con carne the other day? So you're just using the word front to replace subject or topic. Bulk buy means to buy in bulk. If you bulk buy, then you buy something in a great quantity in order to save money. So if you know that you're going to be using lots of toilet roll because you have lots of little people in the house who are going to the toilet several times a day, then rather than just buying six toilet rolls, it might be cheaper for you to buy 20 toilet rolls. So you bulk buy. Buy a load of stuff in one go. In one go just means at the same time. If you do something in one go, you do many things at the same time. And More then like you don't panic shop. buying. Well, you know, you don't, like lots of people will pick things up as they go, like they'll get something every month. They'll pick yeah. up a top here, a pair of trainers there, different sales going on. You don't, you'll go for like, two years and buy nothing new until there's holes in your stuff um, and your things are falling apart and then you go I need to go shopping and then you just bulk buy but what do you do do you prefer to go into store and actually see and feel the things that you're buying and try them on yeah so you know it was a bit of a non-standard physique like it's quite important for me to go and try stuff on but yeah. part, part of the reason so since you've known me I think part of the reason why you think that I sort of bulk buy stuff is more to do with the circumstance that we're in yeah right and actually tied to two children not able yeah, to leave the house exactly so you know I have to literally say I have to go and get some of these stuff now now because of a specific thing that's coming up yeah here Nick made a mistake he said I have to go and get some of these stuff now and that just is a good example of how uh, when we're speaking, we don't know what we're going to say. It's just coming out of our mouths at the moment that we're thinking it. And so I think what Nick was about to say was, I have to go and get some of these things. But then he changed to say some stuff, but got confused, didn't quite get the sentence out right and said some of these stuff. 
So that's a, a mistake. Like, you know, work at the moment has meant that I've needed to focus a little bit more on updating some of my wardrobe for work and making sure that I've got smarter things. Yeah. And so because I haven't had really had much of an opportunity to do that, or money outside of childcare. <laughs> yeah. Um, the drain. It's, it's meant, yeah, it's meant that there's been a bit of a, a pulse, really, of, of trying to yeah. go and get stuff. Because of that challenge as well around, well, I could... I go into town a few times a week, right, to yeah. go go into go into central London. But in order to be able to go somewhere that's not just one or two shops near work on the way home, I've got to go to a very different part of town. So it's a choice then between do I come back and help you with the kids and see the children before they go to sleep or something? Or do I just say, well, I'm not doing any of that tonight because I'm going to go shopping. go shopping for two hours because that's yeah. probably what it's going to take, even though I'm already in town. And so I end up buying more stuff online, but and then just either crossing my fingers that it's going to fit. To cross your fingers is to do this. It's to hope that something will or will not happen. So you normally state what you want and then say, cross my fingers, that it will happen. So in this case, he's hoping, he's crossing his fingers that the clothes that he's bought online will fit. Or probably, almost inevitably going, well, it's not that bad, and then putting it in the cupboard and never wearing it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We definitely need to have a big sort out, I think. <clears throat> Just go through everything and, and decide. To sort out or to have a sort out means to go through things with the intention of putting things into a, the right place. So tidying things up, but also potentially downsizing, removing some things, getting rid of them, perhaps. So it's to organize and clear things up. You sort things out. I need to have a big sort out of the playroom. There's lots of toys now that are for my younger children and my children are getting bigger now. So I would probably sell some of the things that are still really nice and maybe give some things to charity, maybe pass some things on to friends with younger children and babies. I'll have a big sort out. I also said to go through. To go through is another phrasal verb and it means to methodically search through things. Again, with an intention of organizing or getting rid of things. You go through it in an organized way. I, I'm always doing a sort out. I think your wardrobe could do with a, a good... She just wants some space. <laughs> she's got her eye, She's had her eye on it since she's seen it. He and Nick said that I had my eye on it. If you have your eye on something, it means that you're watching something because you desire it. So you're waiting for something to become available or you're waiting for an opportunity where you can take something because you want it. Well, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Okay, guys, that's all for today. Now, if you would like to get your hands on the transcript for today's lesson, just click on the link below, join my free mailing list, and I will send the transcript to you. Until next time, take very good care and goodbye.